This is an instructional video that will go along with the practice tax forms for the income tax unit. And what I'll be doing is just walking you through the process of identifying information for Joseph Redding in completing his federal 1040 easy tax return and his M1 Minnesota tax return. Now the forms that we're using in the example are from 2010, so they're a little outdated, but as far as the location of the material, uh, where that information is going to be located on the forms is um, almost identical to the 2014 forms that you will be completing. The assignment that's the graded assignment <clears throat> will be for um, a student by the name of Sarah Walker. And the information in this little instruction video will be very similar to the process that you'll go through in completing her tax return. So first of all, let's take a look at um, the W-2 form that we currently have on screen. You'll see across the top you have the um, employer social security number. You have um, the wages, tips, and compensation. So Joseph made $9,178 in the calendar year, um, had $754 withheld in federal income tax. And then if you go a little further down, you'll notice that um, in the third row, you'll see his employer was Super Service Station and the address of his employer in Bruno, Minnesota. Uh, below that, it shows you Joseph's personal information, his name, address, and the city that he lives in. And then finally, on the bottom row, you will see that he also had state income tax withheld for $387. All of that will be information um, that you'll use in completing the tax forms we'll be looking at here shortly. As I scroll down the document in this middle section, you'll see Joseph's personal information, his birth date, um, his age. He is elected to contribute um, to a Minnesota Wildlife Fund, which is an option that you would have when, when filing your tax form, and I'll show you where that information goes. Um, he is a student. It shows his phone number. Um, it has his bank ID number for any um, funds that would be returned in a tax refund. And it also shows a routing number to a savings account. So if he is qualified for a refund, he'd like that routed to the bank number that's identified along with the savings account um, that he has at a local savings, uh, a local bank. Um, it's also important to know that Joseph is being claimed as a dependent by his parents. That will make a difference in filling out the income tax form as well. A second form that you'll see is called a 1099. Now, Form 1099 is given um, to an individual at the end of the calendar year if they've received any interest income on a bank savings account or some kind of an investment. And Joseph has an account with Bruno National Bank, which you will see located in the first row, um, and he's earned interest of $45. That is taxable interest that he will need to claim on his income tax. And again, the account number for which that interest was paid was um, located down on this bottom row of the 1099 as well. All right, so I'm going to switch uh, and, and go to the federal 1040EZ for Joseph. And what I would suggest you do is to have the documents um, printed out and go through them, having them kind of side by side, or at least print out the W-2 and the 1099 so you can be looking at that as I walk you through this um, 1040EZ. So first of all, you'll see up on the top his personal information, has his name first and last, his street address in the city, state, and zip code. You'll also note that he has his social security number that is listed. Um, all that information comes off that information sheet that's with the W-2 and the 1099. When we go down to the income section, first of all, you'll see on line number one, it asks for the wages, tips, and salaries. Um, wages and, and tips that Joseph earned in the calendar year was $9,178. You'll also see on line number two, the, the taxable interest that uh, we identified from the 1099 of $45. He has no unemployment compensation for line number three, but then going to line number four, it tells us to add lines one, two, and three 
and this becomes our adjusted gross income. So when we add those two numbers, we get a total of $9,223. In section uh, five, it says that if you are claimed by someone else, you need to identify um, this information on the, work, on, the, on the tax form, and then we also have to refer to a worksheet on the backside to do some calculating of how much of an exemption uh, we actually can claim. So we check the box um, identifying that, that Joseph is being claimed by his parent. And the information then tells us that if no one was claiming him, he could get a deduction of $9,350 for being single. But because his parents are claiming him, we have to do a little bit of work. So let's flip to the back side or the second page of the 1090, <coughs> excuse me, the 1040 EZ. And we want to go to the section that says worksheet for line five. When we go to, to line A, um, it tells us to enter the amount from line one on the front, and that was $9,178. To that number, we will add $300 to give us on line A a total of $9,478. In 2010, the standard deduction was $950. So line C asks us to enter the larger of line A or line B. And so on line C, we'll enter the larger number, which is $9,478. For la um, letter D, it tells us that the maximum standard deduction, if single, is $5,700, and if married filing jointly, $11,400. Well, Joseph is single and is, is filing and being claimed by his parents, so he gets $5,700 as being a stand, the, the standard deduction for, for being claimed. Line E says to enter the smaller of line C, or line D, and this becomes the standard deduction. So line D is $5,700. We'll transfer that amount to line E as well. For letter F, the exemption amount, if single, enters zero, and Joseph is single, so we will do that. And finally, line G tells us to add lines E and F, and then enter that amount on line five of the front. So line E is 57 100, line F is zero. The total 5,700 then will be recorded on the front side or the front uh, page on line five. So let's go back to the first page. And that is why you'll see the number $5,700 recorded here on line five. If we go to line six, line six tells us to subtract line five from line four. And if line is large, if line five is larger, then line four, we enter zero. Well, when we subtract those two numbers, we come up with a total of $3,523. This becomes Joseph's taxable income. Next, we go to the payments and credit section on line number seven. The federal income tax that was withheld, we refer to the 1040, um, excuse me, we refer to the W-2 form. And if you recall, uh, looking across on the top row, you'll see $754 was withheld in, in federal tax. Um, we don't have any um, making work pay credit. We don't have any income earned credit. Um, there, is, there is no non-taxable combat pay. So when we get to line 10, line 10 asks us to add line seven, eight, and nine, and this is our total payments and credits. So that is the $754. Line 11, is our tax line. And it says, use the amount on line six to find your tax in the tax table. Um, and if we refer to the tax table on page 27 through page 35, we would find the amount of income that is his taxable liability, which is the 3,523. And we would go across from that to find the amount of tax that he would be responsible for. And in this particular case, it would be $353. For line number 12, line 12 says if line 10 is larger than 11, subtract line 11 from line 10, and this is your refund. So when we subtract 
754 minus 353, we have a tax refund of $401. On the section below that, we identify the bank routing number that represents the account where Joseph wants the money um, sent. We identify that it is a, a savings account and we identify the uh, account number for Joseph's savings account where that money would be sent. Finally, down on the bottom, Joseph's signature should appear in the signature um, box with his full name, the date in which he completed the income tax return, and identify his occupation as a student, and then also identify his um, daytime phone number. And that would be the completion of the 1040 easy tax return. He would be able then to electronically file or um, mail to the Internal Revenue Service along with a copy of his W-2 form. Next, let's go to the, the second form that needs to be filed, and that would be the Minnesota M-1 individual tax return. Again, we look across the top of the page and we identify the personal information, Joseph's first and last name, his street address, the city, state, and the zip code. Um, we also identify his social security number and on the state form, <clears throat> excuse me, where they're asking for his date of birth. Um, his filing status, he is single. Here's where we identify the um, contribution that he elected to make. I think on the example, on the 10, on the, the um, W-2, tax statement, I think it said $5, and on the tax form it actually shows $15. Um, so this is a contribution that he was making. Now, on Sarah Walker's uh, form that you're going to be doing for your graded assignment, there will not be any contributions that you'll need to be making, so um, we really don't need to worry about this. Okay, next if we go to the income section, <clears throat> you'll see on line A, wages, tips, and salaries. There's the total amount of income that he earned during the calendar year of 9178 but then if you look at item B, IRA, pension, and annuities, <clears throat> there is nothing. Um, in line C, there's unemployment. There was no compensation there. Although his federal adjusted gross income is 9223 And the reason for that is that we have to account for the $45 in interest that he earned that we had included in the federal tax return. So that's why those two numbers are different. If we go to number item number one or line number one, federal, in, uh, federal taxable income, it asks us to take the amount from line six of the 1040EZ, and that number that we calculated was $3,523. A couple of these other sections, we don't have any items that will be recorded for state income tax, for other additional income. So we go down to line number four, Line four tells us to add lines one through three, and that gives us um, $3,523. Um, another section of the Minnesota form we don't need to worry about because he doesn't have anything that qualifies for state income tax, for um, net interest on mutual funds or dividends, any other subtractions. Um, so <clears throat> for the um, line number 10, the Minnesota taxable income, all right, remains at $3,523. When we go to line 11, it asks us to go to the tax tables, again, and this would be the Minnesota tax tables. Um, at this particular year, it was pages 22 to 27, we identify the amount of income that he has his taxable liability, which is the 3523 and on that tax table, we would go directly across to a single person filing, and we would find that his tax liability is $190. He has no alternative minimum tax for line 12, so on line 13, it asks us to add lines 11 and 12, and again, we have $190. He was a full year resident for the entire year, so it tells us to record the amount from line 13 on line 14, and then we can skip 14A and 14B, so again, we record $190. For line 15, tax on lump sum uh, distribution, there was none. So line 16 tells us the before um, tax credits. We add lines 14 and 15, 
and we come up with $190. That number then will be transferred to the top page of page two of the Minnesota M1 form. So tax before credits is the amount from line 16, that's $190. Again, there's a large section here that <clears throat> we, we don't have anything that we qualify for. We have no marriage credit, um, no credit before taxes or other non-refundable um, credits. So all of these sections are, are actually going to be left blank. And when we go down to line number 22, it's subtract line 21 from line 17. We have nothing on line 21, so $190 remains on line 22. Um, the non-game um, contribution that um, he made was $5, and this does not reduce any of your, of your refund or an increase in the amount that you owed, but that's where that amount would be recorded. In Sarah's, Sarah Walker's case, on the, the graded assignment, this will not apply. We won't have this. Um, so we go to add lines 22 and 23, and we have $195. The Minnesota income tax that is withheld for line number 25, if we go back to the W-2 statement, you'll see on the bottom row of the W-2 that $387 was the amount withheld over the course of the year from Joseph's checks. So that amount is recorded on line 25. Sections 26 through 30, none of these items apply. Um, so we go directly to line number 31 for the total payments. We add lines 25 through 30, and we have nothing on any of those other lines. So $387 is the amount that, that we identify. For his refund, the refund asks us to look at line 31. And if line 31 is more than line 34, Line 31 is $387. Um, and if we look at line 24, line 24 was $195. If we subtract those two, we get a total, uh, a total of $192. So our $387 minus our $195 from line 24 gives us a refund on line 32 of $192. That amount has been identified um, to be sent or routed to his bank savings account at the account number that's listed on his um, 1099 form. Again, down at the bottom of the statement, we would um, sign this. Joseph would sign his name, his full name, the date to which he completed the tax return, uh, put in his daytime phone number, and then at the very bottom, it shows us that he would mail this to the Minnesota Individual Income Tax at um, St. Paul, Minnesota, but he also needs to include a copy of his 1040EZ for that calendar year, and he would also include then um, another copy of the W-2 form. So those would be the steps to go through and to fill out and complete a 1040 easy federal tax form as well as a Minnesota M1 tax form. So I hope this is helpful in helping you get through the graded assignment that you'll be doing for Sarah Walker where you will be completing um, the same two forms for calendar year 2014.